Paraneoplastic syndromes are clinical syndromes that are associated with an underlying tumor. Tumors can be associated in paraneoplastic syndromes, which a number of distal effects. They can affect skin, stomach, other organs. But in the neurological system, uh, they can present with an array of different neurological manifestations. Everything from encephalitis to peripheral neuropathies or muscle weakness. When tumors develop, they differentiate or express proteins that are not typically found in the tissues from which the tumor arises. Antibodies are generated to these proteins that are being expressed aberrantly within the immune system. But now the immune system sees them and develops an antibody response. As a group, paraneoplastic syndromes are not common, but alternatively, they're not rare. And uh, they are found associated with tumors, but in some instances, they represent an autoimmune process for which a tumor is not found. When someone has a neurological syndrome, it's important to identify whether there's an underlying um, autoimmune-mediated uh, cause so that therapy can be directed to um, treatment of the disease as if it's an autoimmune disease. And so that might mean immunosuppression, blockade of the antibody, uh, immunomodulation, and a number of other medications that target the immune system and the immune response. It's important to identify these so that you can target your therapy to um, treat the underlying cause of the neurological damage. These syndromes can be devastating neurologically. They damage systems, and the ability of neurological systems, the brain, peripheral nerves to heal uh, there's a limited capacity. By identifying a autoimmune process, you can target your therapy at a, another level. It also alerts the clinician to the possibility that there's an underlying occult malignancy. You can target your treatment to excise or treat by chemotherapy or radiation, or even in some instances by immunotherapy, the tumor, and addressing the tumor, removing the tumor, or controlling its growth tends to improve the autoimmune response. By identifying a malignancy early before it might be manifest in other ways, you have the opportunity to intervene early. When we look at paraneoplastic syndromes, there are an array of different clinical presentations. Many of those clinical presentations are associated with one or a few autoantibodies, but we often see that a given presentation can be caused by a number of different autoantibodies. The inverse of that is that a given autoantibody can have very variable effects, and that's because many of the targets, intracellular proteins, cell surface receptors, um, proteins that are involved in neurotransmission, are often distributed through multiple systems within the nervous system. And so you may see variations in clinical presentation that can be best explained by not just one autoantibody, but multiple autoantibodies that target different proteins or cell surface receptors. There was a very interesting study um, from the uh, Euromune Institute for Experimental Immunology, in which they looked at over 16,000 specimens submitted for evaluation for autoantibodies associated with neurological paraneoplastic syndromes. And in this large study, almost half the time when there was an antibody that was positive, it was positive for an antibody that the clinician did not order. We had received a specimen. We uh, um, found a positive. Um, it incidentally was not the positive that the clinician ordered. The patient was a young girl who was comatose in the intensive care unit. Um, they had done multiple testing, um, had thought she had an infectious encephalitis, but they couldn't find an infectious agent. Turns out she had an antibody that interestingly was first described in men with testicular tumors, uh, but obviously did not have a testicular tumor. She had an autoimmune inflammatory brain disease. They were able to treat her um, for an autoimmune disease and suppress the immune response. And uh, fortunately, she survived. 
there's a growing need to recognize these in patients. Uh, there's a growing need to educate uh, physicians. It's a, it's a relatively new field. It's a specialized field. And it's very exciting to be able to have the tools to, to test for these and provide this service.